Welcome to the season finale of Why is Expensive, the show where I come right here, pick a lens I wish I owned, but can't afford to, and figure out why it costs so bloody much. In today's episode, we're looking at something small but mighty. This tiny 50mm f2 lens costs $2,395. This is the Leica Sumicron M 50mm f2. If you think $2,400 is a crazy amount of money to spend on a single 50mm lens, well then Leica does have quite a few more 50mm that cost a lot more, which I'll be honest here means that this is not exactly Leica's most exciting 50mm lens, but it is the one and only Leica that's currently in Lens Library's inventory, at least for now. But still, this is an f2 50mm that costs $2,400. So why does it cost that much? Well, the short answer is because it's a Leica, but you probably already know that. Now we do need to acknowledge that this is first and foremost a Leica lens, and that is very much part of the reason why this is so expensive. Now up front, it almost sounds like a premium branding thing, but take in mind that you can't really say the same for conventional brands like Canon. Why is that? Because each and every single Leica lens is handmade. Plus the fact that they are all made in very small batches, that's just the manufacturing model that Leica's decided works best for them. There's a two and a half minute video by Leica on their Vimeo page that if you haven't seen, you should really do so because it shows the manufacturing process and it really helps with appreciating the workmanship that goes on behind the crafting of every single Leica lens. So small batch and handmade means you're gonna have a very limited supply of lenses and a very high labor cost. There's a lot of highly skilled people that need to be paid for a lot of hours to make a single Leica lens. So this is expensive because it actually costs significant money to make. So let's have a closer look at this actual lens. This is actually a 1994 version, otherwise known as a Type 5 by Leica enthusiasts because there's been many iterations of the Sumicron 50. Now, although this is a 1994 redesign, it actually uses optics dating back to 1979. So pretty old optics, close to double my age. But get this, it actually holds up incredibly well to today's standards. The excellence in engineering this lens is simply marvelous. Now, Lens Library doesn't really have any Leica M bodies yet, which is why today we're gonna be shooting with this lens on a Sony a7R 3 with a Voigtlander adapter. Now, first thing to keep in mind, they did not have 42 megapixel sensors back in 1979, and even today, the highest resolution digital Leica M camera only has a 24 megapixel sensor. So reasonably speaking, this setup should be way out of this lens's comfort zone, except it's not. If we're talking resolution, it is astonishingly sharp, wide open at f2. It does soften up a little bit into the corners, but they're still holding up very well. Stopping the lens down does increase its sharpness by a little bit, but not by much at all. And I was really shocked to find out that even when compared against a modern 50mm like the Loxia 50mm, the Sumicron M performs incredibly well against the Loxia and you can barely even tell if there's any difference at all. But if you really want a pixel peep, I would probably give a marginal edge to the Loxia. Looking at more photos from the Sumicron M, the images have great contrast. Subjects appear to pop right out from the background. The bokeh out of the lens is decent, but it's certainly not the best. The autofocus elements can look a bit busy at times, but I personally don't find it too distracting. Another thing is, this lens distorts so little, there's practically no noticeable distortion at all. Chromatic aberration also exists, but just a tiny bit, you probably won't notice it until you intentionally look for it. So not bad at all for a 1979 design in 2019, but you really, really need to take into account the size of this lens. Because this was designed for Leica's rangefinder cameras, this thing is absolutely tiny. The front filter diameter is only 39 millimeters. Here it is right beside a Canon Nifty 50. This thing is smaller than the Nifty 50. Sure, it's an F2, but a lens this small, covering a full frame image circle and delivering optically excellent results, you have to admit, is pretty impressive. It even has a little built-in hood that slides out. I like how it has a little extra dot for the iris marker when you do slide the initial one out. And while we're talking about build, we do have to take a moment to appreciate how well this lens was put together. This is like a workmanship. The focus ring rotates like a dream. It's smooth with just the right amount of dampening. The iris ring has some of the most satisfying clicks ever. All the lens markings are sharp and highly visible. Everything is metal. And although the lens only weighs 242 grams, it's actually very, very substantial for its size. This is a very masterfully crafted lens. So this lens is expensive because it is a remarkable piece of engineering handcrafted by Leica in Germany, which basically sums up every single Leica product. Let me know in this poll whether or not you think 
the Leica Summicron M is worth the $2,400 price tag. And if you'd like to get your hands on this Summicron, Lens Library does welcome absolutely everyone to just swing by and experience this lens for yourself alongside everything else they have. Let's just hope they stock up on a bit more Leica lenses. This place is in Malaysia, so if you plan to visit, I'll leave some info down below on how to get here. Why is expensive is also going on a short break while we wrap up season one and figure out what's next. It's been an amazing season with you guys, so be sure to stay tuned and be subscribed to the channel for more updates on season two. So that's pretty much it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.